I'm going to describe how to use the beam finder feature in Plane Plotter. First of all, it's necessary to run the program for a little while so that it accumulates statistics about the mode S pulse rates that are being used in your area. Once the program has been running for long enough, if you select Tools, Radar Site Analysis, the first three items will become uh, available for clicking on. Previously they were greyed out, but once they're available, if you click on this one, Log Mode A, Radar Pulse Intervals, Ping, you'll get a reminder that you're going to clear some log files if they already exist, and then it starts the log. Now you should leave that running for quite a little while because the statistics need to be gathered over many rotations of the various radar heads and uh, this is best done when you've got a reasonably large number of aircraft within your coverage area so that there's lots of ping data being recorded to the log file. This might put quite a strain on your PC if uh, you have a lot of other things running as well and if you have a very large number of uh, aircraft and a very well placed antenna and a very sensitive receiver. Um, but typically I would leave it for 15 minutes or so. So we'll come back to this after that time has elapsed. Okay, so it's been running for a little while. If we open Windows Explorer at the log files directory, you can see a number of files called ping-zz uh, which are being updated as we watch. The, the two digits after the zz are just a sequence number in which that particular radar pulse repetition rate was detected. But the number in brackets is the number of microseconds of the repetition rate of the radar head in question. <coughs> Some of them are quite small um, and as such probably aren't real uh, because of the speed of light. There's a, a minimum repetition rate that's reasonable to, to operate under without catching your previous pulse before the next one's uh, had a chance to get anywhere. Um, but uh, basically these are all potentially um, pulse rates from radar heads. Now some of them um, may be coming from the same radar head. If you can see there's a 6.5 there, a 6.2 there uh, well it's moving up and down but that I think might be different pulse rates from the same radar head which is still usable but not for all of the features that uh, Plane Plotter supports. So what I'm going to do is Going back to plane plotter, I'm going to stop the logging of the uh, pulse intervals like that, <coughs> and then I'm going to perform an analysis. Now, this is quite quite a long process on this machine. Um, the first step is uh, tools radar site analysis, analyze radar site ping log. So click on that and we see the same list of files that we saw earlier. <coughs> um, and I'm going to click on the size so that we see the biggest ones at the top. Um, now I happen to know that this one that's around about 8000 microseconds is not a conventional radar head. It's probably something to do with um, interrogations between aircraft. And the same is true of multiples of 8,000. So there's one here at 16,000. So those are not very interesting. 2440 I think is too short to be real. So the one we'll start by analysing is this 6599 microsecond uh, pulse rate. So <coughs> I'll double click on that and it says that in the file 39 aircraft have exhibited pings of that um, interval. Um, so we click on that and it's found that the rotation of the head is 
around about 3.8 seconds, just under 4 seconds per rotation of that particular radar head, or in revs per minute, a little over 15 RPM. Now the next step, if I click on OK, the program starts to perform an iterative analysis to try and determine whereabouts the radar head might be located. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure if we're going to be lucky with this, depending on which one it is. It might not show on the chart, but we'll see. Uh, it takes it takes several minutes. OK, so it's come up with a putative position of 36.9 north and just about 8 degrees west. So uh, that's actually rather close to, uh, to where we are here. Um, <coughs> and the scatter figure there, 0.07, the smaller the better for that. If it's a very big figure, then it's not likely to be uh, a good answer. But anyway, so I'll OK to that, and it's going to write this data to a file which we can use in a minute. So I'll OK to that. Now, the circle, the white circle, shows where it has tried to establish the, uh, the location of the radar head. Um, <coughs> so I'm going to... Uh, now let me explain. The, these orange lines are also uh, for each pair of pulses that uh, it, it's uh, explored. It's trying to work out a circle on which the radar head should sit. So uh, ignore these these concentrations where there are black dots because those are the aircraft that contributed to the to the calculation, and the the circles have to go through those aircraft. That's the point. It goes through two aircraft and the radar site. But there's definitely a congregation of these orange lines in the vicinity of uh, this white circle. The white circle is the calculated position and the orange lines give you another feel for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on it and that will add that position which is slightly different from the center of the white circle to the uh, database that it's slowly um, creating. Now I'm going to choose Tools Radar Site Analysis again and then ping log file and display. Now what this does is, uh, I'll choose the same file, 6599. What this does is it looks for radii that are um, basically two aircraft that respond almost at the same instant um, to, the, to, to the same pulse. And uh, clearly if they, if they respond at the same instant they must more or less be on um, the same radial from the radar head. Now if I if I move the mouse there, this, this fiducial grid, you can see um, <coughs> the red lines, which are the uh, the, uh, the lines corresponding to double pulses from, from two aircraft, uh, are all pretty much lined up with the radial lines on the white grid that I've placed there. So I have a high degree of confidence that pretty much where the mouse is, the middle of those radial lines, those white radial lines, is where the radar head is. So <coughs> I'm going to hold down the shift key again and click there and that's given me another position in the uh, file that's building up for that particular um, radar site. So if we now go back to Windows Explorer we can see that in addition to all these ping files, there's a file that's been created called radar site measurements.log. If I open that up, you can see that uh, this is the scatter we saw, small is good, and this is the pulse repetition rate, 6599 uh, microseconds. And this is the latitude and the longitude estimated for it and this is the rotation rate of the head in RPM. <coughs> this manual estimate is the one we did by clicking on the orange circles, the confluence of the orange circles, which has given us a position 37.1 and minus 8.0 and this next line is the estimate that we clicked on the center of those radial red lines. So we've, we've basically used three different methods of estimating the position of this radar head. <coughs> the program did it for itself. 
Then we did it based on clicking on the, and that was the white circle. Then we did it based on the confluence of those orange circles. And then we did it on the center of the radial lines, the red lines, in the, uh, in the final analysis. So we have three values for the location of this site. 36.9 minus 7.9, 37.1 and minus 8, 37.1 and minus 8.1. <coughs> And those are actually very close to the location. This is the um, radar head at Faro Airport, about uh, 60 kilometers from where I'm sitting. And uh, those estimates are very good. So those values will lead us to create an entry in the eventual database that the program will use. So we've got three estimates for the position of the radar site and we want to come up with our best estimate. First thing we could do is just look at these three values 36.9, 37.1, 37.1 and do a rough and ready average and call it 37.0. I'm going to change that to 37.0 and the other one is minus 7.9, minus 8, minus 8.1 so minus 8 will be the average of those. <coughs> this is not particularly accurate as you can tell but it's going to get us pretty close. Now we could just run with that. If that's the best we can do, we could put that in and see how it works. Or we could look in the area of that. We've got it to about a tenth of a degree. We could look in that, look on a Google Earth, for example, and search around for a likely radar site. In this case, the radar is on the airport at Faro, and if you search around on Google Earth, you can actually see the radar uh, antenna and read off the coordinates and refine them. Or Better still, as I did, search the uh, Portuguese AIP, look for the radar sites and find the actual coordinates published in the uh, public documents. And I did that and I came up with uh, 37.015 for the latitude and minus 7.97 for the longitude. So that's now the best estimate I can come up with for that location. So we use the coordinates that we determined from the three methods of finding it to identify the fact that the radar was indeed at Faro Airport and then we used the resources available to refine the coordinates even more. So this file now can actually be uh, the radar.txt file that plane plotter will use. Now this has only got one radar site in, we've only just done one. Normally you would do as many as you can that give good results. Sometimes you do some and they give poor results. We're not quite sure why, maybe the pulse rates are variable or something. Um, and in some countries the pulse rates can actually be ambiguous across various sites. And I've already mentioned that the uh, 8,000 and 16,000 microsecond pulses don't seem to relate to airborne uh, to, to ground-based interrogations at all. They seem to be something to do with um, airborne interrogations. So this is one one data entry for our radar.tx file. So now I'm going to save that as radar.tx in the directory where planeplotter.exe is held. Save as and call it radar.tuxt. So it's now called radar.tuxt and it's in the right file. So now I need to restart plane plotter so that it reads the new radar.tuxt file. <coughs> so now it's running again and it's reading the new file. So let me show you what happens if I designate one of these aircraft. Now we know where these aircraft are but it will still do the beam find op operation. So you see what's happened is the uh, red lines are showing that from the Faro radar site a series of radials have popped up where the aircraft has pinged in response to the interrogation and the length of those lines has been calculated from the delay time of the pulses going from the radar head to the aircraft and to me. 
So there's there's two legs to this thing, and the distances have to be all subtracted in order to make the those arcs the right length. And the lozenge shape that's at the moment slightly down into the left of the circle around the actual aircraft's position is plane plotter's best estimate for the position of the aircraft. Now, we're doing this for an aircraft which is a known position, but this will also work for an aircraft whose position is unknown. Now, the interesting development with this range feature being added, previously they were simply the radials, is that we can estimate the position of an aircraft using only the data from a single radar site. We're not using multiple radar sites and intersecting the the lines. We're, we're using the radials and the range calculated from the time delay of the pulse as received at our location. So this enormously increases the capability of Beamfinder Plus uh, in those areas where there are not a lot of radar sites. We're lucky here because there are almost dozens of them, many many radar sites illuminating aircraft in this area. But I know in other parts of the world they're much fewer and further between and this new feature in Plane Plotter allows you to estimate the position of an aircraft even when you only have one local radar site. Provided it has a single pulse rate and provided that it uh, has a stable pulse rate then uh, it should be possible to use that to locate an aircraft who is not transmitting its position and that's the new feature in Beamfinder.